this is, this is, this is. All right, you guys, what's up? So where are you guys at right now? Uh, we're in uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. We are at Jeff's apartment yeah. right this moment. Jeff, Jeff, dude, last time I saw you, you were in Texas. So you've, you've made your way out of Texas. You're going the opposite way most people are going. Most people are moving to Texas. Yeah, the, I, did the, I did the opposite for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm from, from West Coast. So uh, Texas was more just like a, you know, an experience. But now I'm, I feel more at home on the mm-hmm. West Coast. It was a pit stop for him. Yeah. Right on. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so Jeff Anton's drums and Shane Finch. Did I get that right? Shane Finch. You play yes, guitar, sir. you sing. Um, mm-hmm. The band is called Pinstock. I, I'll be honest, this is my first time hearing about you guys. I asked Jeff, what's your band called? He sent it to me. I looked it up. Good job. I mean, I really dig a lot of these songs. And the most recent song, uh, What I Do This Time, it's just been in my head all day. Like, oh, just yeah. keeps hitting. It's really, really a, a great hook. So, liking the style liking kind of what you guys are doing. So just take us through it, because me being a newbie, would love to hear kind of what you guys started out going, and of course we'll get into you know your future plans. But uh, Shane, before Absolutely. we get into that, sorry, are you from LA? I am not from LA. I'm originally from uh, Southern Indiana. Uh, don't tell anybody that, but that's originally where I come from. I've been in LA for a little over nine years now, so about nine years. <laughs> There's not so a lot. This of, is like home. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's that's great. I was gonna say there's not a lot of people in the music business that's actually from LA that lives there. But um, right. that reminds me of the Ataris. Chris Rowe from the Ataris is from Indiana, so you're mm-hmm. in good company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So Pinstock, what's up with it? Yeah. Yeah. So Pinstock. Well, first of all, before we get into anything about Pinstock, I just want to acknowledge like what an honor this is. By the way, we are all huge MXPX fans, so I just felt like I needed to acknowledge that. Um, but as far as my band goes, Pinstock, um, so I grew up, um, you know, very much in the hip hop scene, actually. And traditionally, that's what I grew up, grown up as. And uh, for years, I went under the hip hop moniker Big Shane, um, which I still do. I still do a lot of hip hop stuff as well. But uh, by the time I was in like high school, early college, I started getting far more into like punk rock and indie rock and things like that. And I just eventually was like, you know what, I want to kind of do something that's different that I can take, you know, the uh, hip hop vocals and things like that, but do it over more uh, punk rock and pop punk music. Um, And so that was kind of where the the birth of Pinstock came from. Um, And I recorded an EP with um, our incredible producers, Lisa Pimentel and Chris Marlette and Bob Marlette. And uh, from there, I was able to find our uh, band members, Danny Rivas and Ricky Inigo. And um, that eventually led to finding Jeff. And now here we are doing it. And we're kind of this weird blend of pop punk and alternative rock but also there's always a little bit of hip-hop involved in it um and so that's if i had to like put it in a nutshell that's you know pretty much what pinstock is yeah just on first glance i'd, I'd say that that sounds right to me you know for, as an outsider and i right away like hearing the hip-hop vocals on some of the verses i was like okay i'm one i'm surprised more bands don't do this because hip-hop is so popular um yeah. mm-hmm. and i think and I think, you know, there are a few bands that do something like that. But, like, hearing the just the lush pop melodies that you guys have, the hooks with that, it was a different mm-hmm. blend than what I had normally heard. Like, you hear, you, you hear a lot of times, like, a lot harder styles. And um, mm-hmm. this was this is cool, dude. Like, like I said, like... I don't. I don't really feel like you guys sound like anybody else. Of course, there's the pop punk influence and the hip hop influence, but doing whatever you guys do together makes it its own thing, which is very, very hard to do these days, to be honest. So, uh, congrats on that. So, that led to what you guys? I mean, are you? Is it is it easy for you to write lyrics? Like coming from the hip hop background, how do you write your lyrics? What's your songwriting process Um, for that? Yeah, that's a good question. So I kind of, when I went into this, I approached it very, I think, a little different than most, you, you know, people who are forming a band approach it. And I traditionally in hip hop, you know, it's not unusual for you to just have 
multiple different producers producing your beats and everything. So with this, I was like, I want to find, because the truth is I didn't, the guitar is still a new thing to me in the, in the grand scheme of things. When I had first gotten into the idea of forming Pinstock, that's when I started learning guitar. Um, so I knew, I was like, I need to find people who can essentially make instrumentals for me that are, you know, uh, the the skeleton of a good of rock or pop punk song, and that's again where the band members come in. Um, but as far as lyrics go, I'll usually just try to write to you know the the song that we've come up with together. Um, or if ever I'm feeling like you know um, writer's block or whatever, I'll write to a beat like a straight up hip hop beat that's the same tempo, and then that way I can just take it and plop it onto one of our songs and try to you know make it fit, and that way it doesn't sound you know mashed or anything. But uh, it can be either that, you know, either I'm writing to what we came up with or sometimes, like I said, I'll just write to a beat and uh, put it all together. So, yeah. That's cool to hear that you you use sort of like, I don't know, a different way, a different angle to like find the lyric and the, the cadence for, you know, a simpler or a similar, sorry, not similar tempo, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. which is. I'm trying to think, I guess I have done similar things, but not really, I've never really committed to like fully doing that, but there was one Lucero song <laughs> that I remember like years ago, I wrote different lyrics. It was just in my head over and over. So I'm like, start writing different lyrics. And then I ended up making that a tumble down song, which is another band I played in for, a, for a quite okay. a while. But, uh, that's a, it's just, it's a cool angle. Yeah. I, I would encourage anybody listening. That's like having writer's block. That is a great little, little trick. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and you know, part of um, the way it had started originally too was I would find myself when I would listen to you know bands like Death Cab for Cutie or Modest Mouse, I would find myself like freestyling over it a little bit or like coming up with my own vocal idea for it. And that's ultimately what made me be like, you know what? I think I can. Because um, first of all, I'll, I'll say I am still a huge hip hop fan, but there's a lot of things in hip hop culture that don't necessarily align perfectly with my identity, uh, specifically like. There aren't a lot of pop punk songs about how that band is the best pop punk band. But it's <laughs> yes. not unusual for like a hip hop song. It's about how you're the best hip hop person. And I was like, I want to write things that are a lot more real and more authentic and coming from the heart. And it's easier for me to do that. I've learned whenever it's over uh, a pretty, you know, guitar chord or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how it had started. And a lot of our early, early songs, those were written over like modest mouse instrumentals and things like that, that I then just like I said earlier, take and put it on something else. But mm -hmm. yeah, dude, that's interesting, man. And, and you're so right about the hip hop culture because Jeff, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of bands we grew up listening to that said they were the best and it fuck everyone else. And like, all this shit, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's usually the the, like the exact opposite. It's all about the community and, yeah. and just like being old. <laughs> I've met by far the most humble people I've ever met, including yourself in strictly in the punk rock scene. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wonder. Like, I'm trying to think of bands that I listen to. Maybe Gorilla Biscuits, Seven Seconds. Those types of bands really kind of like ingrained in me, ingrained in all the listeners. You know, in that those scenes. You know, that we're here to take care of each other. We're here to like, if you fall down in the pit, pick each other up. That kind of thing. And uh, I mean, yeah, hip hop has has a different trajectory as far as I haven't been to a lot of hip hop shows. Uh, are those like how different is there a difference between hip hop shows and punk shows? Like I've, um, I've been to it, big ones, by the way, big like stadium, like Lil Wayne and things like that. I've been to that, but, yeah. but n no like club shows. I would say it really just depends sort of in a similar way, like who the artist is and everything. I've seen hip hop shows that get nice and rowdy too. Um, but I've also been to plenty where you don't want to mess your outfit up. You know what I mean? So Things like that. So that's that also kind of is where the culture can come in, and just depending on who the artist is and who their influence is, you know, and what what that artist likes to do, um, and how much that artist likes to get the crowd going, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. cool. So, how much do you? I mean, how serious are you guys taking this band? Is this? Uh, are you guys going full on as much as you can for this new? You have a new album coming, right? New album coming, uh, Juliet Street, coming Friday, March 31st. Um, we're go like this, you know, just to be honest, this like is my life. This is my everything. Um, and we are four dudes who work full time, nine to five jobs. Um, so we're doing it, you know, as, as much as we can, you know, while being completely independent. Um, I'm also an uh, elementary school teacher. And I teach at a private school in North Hollywood that is, uh, you know, 
relatively speaking, by teacher standards, were really well taken care of. Um, so I feel really blessed that with the career I have, I'm able to invest more and do a lot more than the average independent band is. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's we're doing as much as we can with the constraints we have. Yeah, constraints. I think. All the way. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, yeah, going all the way is is the goal. I mean, really, um, you know, it's you can't you can't really let off or or just oh we're gonna we're gonna push this and we're gonna put a lot of work and then we're not gonna have a plan after that and chill. Like you need to have mm-hmm. you have you have to have multiple layers of you know we're gonna do this, but we're already planning the thing behind that so we can get going and then the thing behind that as well. So that way mm-hmm. we just have a, a constant rush of momentum uh, all right you know to take the the sky's the limit basically. yeah sky sky is definitely the limit yeah for sure do you guys have defined roles in the band or do you are you still trying to figure that out um, aside from what you play of course <laughs> right, right right um i don't know if i'd say defined yet but it's things that are kind of coming into place like um jeff and our guitarist danny they handle a lot of like the audio equipment and audio setup and danny is basically our guitar tech as well for himself and for myself um i you know tend to do a lot more of the management stuff i'm the ones who try to book shows and i'm handling more of the social media stuff um but that said we all equally put our input in and if anybody has an idea like you know two heads are always better than one so we try to get as much uh, input from everybody as we can yeah, it's definitely a group effort for sure, and that's that's always been my style. Every band I've ever played in has always been equal parts input from every member versus your other style of band where it's basically just revolves around one person doing everything, and then they, you know, they might be known to swap out members like crazy because they are the whole thing. But mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I know with us we're all basically equal parts. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So. New album, so you have you have the is is what I do this time is that coming on the new album as well? Is that the single? That will be on the new album, track two on the new album, yes, sir. Rad, everybody, you got to hear that song, and I'm sure you will now. But it's called "What I Do This Time." It's just got a nice, sweet vibe to it. Like it, it puts you in a good. Even though it's kind of a, a in some ways, like a, a screw up song, like I messed up again, you know, whatever. But like, it didn't seem sad to me though. It seemed like. Almost like a, a nod. We all we all screw up all the time or whatever, right? So I, it's just it has a sweetness to it that I I enjoyed, and and I feel like I feel like it's still in my head right now. Like that just, and, and I think what it is about it is because it's not a typical pop punk pop punk song, where you know you hear a not a nicely written song with a a really great hook that has like the lyric that's really catchy, the top line, you know. Um, I, I won't name names, but there's plenty of bands that do that, you know, and, and, and sure, we've all written a song like that, but a song like this is, it's got a personality to it. That's what it is. It's got its own personality. It's got the hook. It's got, you know, your hip hop, you know, the pin stock sound, which is the hip hop with the hook, you know, the, the melodic singing hook or whatever, but it does things that I'm not expecting, you know what I mean? Which is cool. So I don't know. It's, it's. It's going to be on my playlist for a while. So I'm looking forward to the rest, rest of the record. I haven't heard anything else off the new album. Just um, what you guys have out right now is mostly like singles. A few, maybe one EP and a, and a bunch of singles, right? Is that, am I right? Or is that just what I see on? That, that is correct. On, on the streaming sites. That's correct. This will, be, this will be our first album and our, you know, the one EP we've released, that was the, the first batch of songs that originally I had done, um, as I mentioned, with uh, the, uh, our producer and everybody. And then that helped find our band members um but yeah this will be our okay. first album and our first big like you know real good serving of pin stock if you will so so out of all the parts like writing the writing the the record recording the record doing artwork video uh maybe some like marketing video like what what is the what's your thing you gravitate towards and what's the thing that you're like i wish i didn't have to do that ever <laughs> Um, well, I, I love handling social media. I I love making little, you know, editing little ads and things like that. And so specifically with like, you know, Instagram and Facebook, I'm a big fan of doing it, doing it there. And also we run Spotify and YouTube ads. 
if I had to choose anything that it's, you know, this is part of it, uh, is like the TikTok game. That is something I am still trying to figure out. Um, <laughs> we, we really need to step our TikTok game up. We post, but um, there's some, and the things that do get a lot of views and that do go viral are like the videos you, or at least I would least expect. The mm-hmm. ones of us just like, right, can we curse by the way? I don't know if we can curse. Yeah, yeah this is internet. Yeah, you're good. Okay, okay. I was, okay cool. I was going to say the videos of us like fucking up a song or whatever, um, those are the ones that we tend to that get a lot of views. Um, yeah. So that's one thing that I wouldn't say I, I want to steer away from it, but I definitely could use some help and some, some uh, tutorials or something to help me figure out TikTok more. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I personally don't know it well at all. Like I, I don't get on there, but um, it's it's one of those things. It's like – Yes, we have to be on social media to to let people know what's happening or whatever. Um, But to do it the right way, that's the hard part, right? So it's great that you don't mind doing the social media for the most part. You like making little videos because that's really – that's the game, you know, making little videos, making – I think what it is about the TikTok videos that – you're saying like they people want to see somebody mess up they want to see somebody fall down they want to see somebody get a little hurt maybe not a lot of hurt but they want to see you get a little hurt and uh i think the tiktok algorithm really pushes that kind of thing um yeah but i I want to give a shout i remember listening um yeah you remember uh when when you did that interview with um this wildlife Mm mm-hmm those guys, their uh, their their TikTok game is strong. Like to this day, uh, ever since that uh, episode with them, like to this day, I still watch like all their stuff because, like, man, these guys, they got they got it down. It's great inspiration. I think, yeah, and maybe that's partly their upbringing or something. Like because they're, they're young guys, you guys are young guys. They're young guys, and a lot of bands my age are not as good at the internet stuff, right? There's there's sort of like these like these different tiers, uh, levels of understanding when it comes to the internet, when it comes to technology, when it comes to using some of these things. Um, and I think one of the things that a very simple thing that people don't understand is TikTok is different than Facebook is different than Twitter. It's all different. It's all similar, but it's each platform has a different algorithm, has a different thing that people are re- usually on there for. And right. it's not necessarily like people don't usually go on Twitter uh, for TikTok t- style videos, you know, they're going on there for news for the most part or gossip news and, and whatever. But of course I'm generalizing. Um, but like when you see bands tweet the same exact thing, and I do this too sometimes, but when they do the same exact thing for every single social media, that is a lack of understanding that, okay, you need to tweak for each audience. Maybe, maybe yeah. even your, your diameter of video or picture, you know, your ratios or whatever are, are different for each one. But that's simple. That's like me telling you this. You guys probably already know that inherently. You were born with that ability. Maybe. We're learning. We're learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. How old are you guys? <laughs> We we're millennials, so we're so I'm 32. I'm 36. Jeff's 36. Uh, Danny is our youngest. Our guitarist, he's 30, and uh, Ricky, our bass player and vocalist, is also 32. So we're all in our 30s. 30 is the new 20. 20 is the new 10. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. That's great, man. You guys, I mean. I feel like you got a lot of years ahead. Don't worry, we're st- we're still moving. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just love that you uh, you're doing this project, and it's your first album. So that means you're actually kind of you're you're not slaving away and you know releasing six albums before, hopefully before anybody hears it. You know, um, right. Keep, so yeah, keep keep pushing on that. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think adapting is, is really what musicians have to do for the most part. Every single year, there's new things, there's right. new ways. And, and I'm not saying jump on and follow every little tactic, every little technology that, that comes up because that'll drive you crazy as well. But I think it's just more about keeping your, your, your head up, paying attention to like the big things that come your way. Cause we personally right. didn't, we didn't, uh, MXPX didn't really pay any attention to Spotify or any streaming until our 2018 self-titled album. 
at that point we started, okay, this is part of our, you know, revenue stream, part of what, what we can do to, to pay bills. But before that, we just, you know, we just weren't paying attention, to be honest. I, I would say ignorance for sure. Just not, not knowing how important it can be for you. Um, things like that. But there's, there's other things like, like streaming, you know, that, that I think bands sometimes neglect because we're so used to making all of our money off of live shows or spending all our money on live shows, whatever it is. But, uh, there's, there's technology has taught me like the last few years, it's been insane how many different ways to make money. But again, the problem is it's never easy. Everybody always says, Oh, it's so easy. Just spend five minutes, answer a couple questions, do this, do that. It never works for me that way. I don't know if you guys have experienced yeah. things easy like that, but for me, it's always like, okay, if I'm going to work on something and put some time into a new revenue stream, that's going to take months. It's never going to be a yeah. thing where you can just sign up and go, psh, psh, oh, here's my bank account routing number. And then, let the money flow in Work like it. yeah that that's not a real thing as far as i know and i think a lot of no. in techie influencer type people they just leave out some of that and they just say like this is what yeah. you do you know um right so well we we i was gonna say we live in a world where like you know instant gratification kind of is the norm now and so it makes it where people i think that's what they want is they want the quick easy solution and Yes, we, we as a band take a very brick by brick approach like it is I've just learned we we're trying to just get in hours, you know, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, sometimes it goes really, really well and sometimes it doesn't. But with us, nothing has I wouldn't say anything really comes easy. We are constantly learning. And even, you know, this album that we recorded, it was we went into it knowing like, OK, we're going to listen to our producers and take their advice and treat this as not only a chance to record a great album, but also a chance to really learn what professional songwriting looks and sounds like. And um, yeah, so nothing I don't think has came easy for us. Everything we try to try to learn as much as we can and be as open minded as we can. And yeah. Dude, that's rad. Jeff, what about you? So, yes. you know, now you're in California. Where are you originally from? Oregon. Oregon. And I'm sure we yeah. talked about this years and years ago when we first met, but I, I didn't remember that. So you ended up down in Texas. Um, I'm sure, you, I mean, you were touring with another band for a while when we met, I think. Um, but I know you as a photographer, as a video, you know, vi videographer. Um, you have a lot of crazy adventures online, you know. <laughs> so you're really great at what you do. So like hearing, you know, getting you to finally hit me up to to do this podcast with this new band I, I was stoked when i heard how good it was so congrats jeff thank you thank I, you this is honestly this has been like in the back of my mind for probably a year and a half or so i was like listening i was like you know what at one point we're gonna have like we're gonna be in a spot where i need to hit up mike and we gotta like chat about something we're working on but it's taken this long to get there but i'm very excited and it reminded me um I was going to mention earlier that, you know, we're talking about um, this, say, being our our first kind of full length, our first major album. And, and um, you know, it, it hopefully it hits really well. But even though it's our first album, you know, it's we mentioned we're in like our 30s and all that. So some of us have been in the scene or doing, you know, doing stuff for a decade or two. So mm -hmm. um, that's at least one thing I, I'm thankful for at this stage to where you don't you don't really have to start at the beginning. You can take all of your experience from all those other bands, from all those last tours, uh, everything that you've been doing for like the last 15 years. And then when you find the right guys to work with that have, you know, similar goals and, and think the same way, well, you can take all that experience you had, their connections, the people you know, and basically just we're, I think what it is, is we're just kind of hit, hitting the ground running is is kind of the mm -hmm. the idea with this and so that's um that's something i'm very very happy about mm -hmm. pedal to the metal hell yeah so shows i mean what are shows like down in, in down in california these days like for for you guys 
it's it's a variety. And that, yeah, <laughs> you never know. Gonna it's, get down here, and that is hard. That is very hard to answer. Uh, we just last week, so you know, we're really you know an aspiring band. We're mostly playing like dive bars and really any opportunity we can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just this last week, we played at a dive bar up in the North Valley, and it ended up being one of the better shows in LA we've played. Um, last night, we played at another dive bar in the Valley that we've played at before and had an incredible experience. Um, and last night, it could have went a little bit better. So it's sort of hit or miss here. I think um, a, a saying that Jeff said once was that like LA is one of the best places to be a band and one of the worst places to play as a band. Because yeah. um, <laughs> when we're on tour playing random clubs in, in small towns in Texas, we can have just as many people and just as great of a night as if we're in you know West Hollywood playing the Strip or whatever. So Yeah. yeah. Wow. Val- yeah, wow. Dive, dive Bar in the Valley is... Maybe those bars, those types of bars are the best in L.A. anyway. <laughs> I've always had the most fun. Dive bars in the Valley. Yeah. Like the Nectar. Um, Being on the road is, is definitely the, for us, uh, after we kind of went on our, our first trip last um, spring or August. August In August. Um, luckily, these guys kind of, uh, was that your first like kind of tour experience? That was our first tour experience. Jeff, you know, and we were really, really blessed to find him just before we, we had done that. Um, but that was our first on the road experience. Um, and we, it was an experience. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it kind of really puts in contrast the difference between playing locally and playing out and about. Not only is it just more fun because you're, it's kind of like vacationing, you're, mm-hmm. you're on the road having adventures, but the the shows that we play even if it's a place we've never been to and nobody knows us nine times out of ten it's a better show than what we usually get here in our hometown so Mm -hmm. uh luckily after that first tour now it's like already booking the next tour starting Mm -hmm. next month and we're booking the the summer tour after that and Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it just becomes all about hitting the road now Mm -hmm. that's so fun dude there is something about it you know and and maybe it's just the fact that humans they they see somebody from their hometown or if they they just have the knowledge and la is kind of its own thing too it's kind of you know everybody's seen everything but but just from the 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 basics of human nature like we weren't we weren't liked in our hometown for a long time either and we probably still aren't to be honest but (laughs) i mean we are but but you know it's just it's not the same like violent femmes were hated in their hometown you know where madison wisconsin or wherever they're from um Mm -hmm. random that I said that, but I think the reason why I mentioned that is because he mentioned it. He was like, we, we were always hated in our hometowns. So yeah, getting out on tour really for, for us, we became a real band. 1995, we, we hit our first tour. We toured all summer after high school and we, we realized, wow. Okay. One, if we play every night, we're going to, we get really good. We're starting to get good. So like bands that, I feel bad for bands that can't get together and play together a lot because it really, there's almost no way to get tour ready without actually touring, right? Like you're not, if, if it's your first tour, you're never going to be ready. You just have to jump in and go for it. Um, mm-hmm. And you get sore, but it, it's, you get, you get calluses, tour calluses, I call it after a while, where you're just used to being up all night at weird hours. You're used to being dirty, smelly. You're used to, you know, having (laughs) to pull over real quick but uh yeah man i mean it sounds like it sounds like an experience that that is never a bad thing even during the hard times um do you feel like i was i always hear people saying i don't think live music and bands is going to be a thing in the future and they're talking about maybe the dystopian future where uh you know the government is watching you 24 seven. Wait, that's happening now. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the even more dystopian yeah. future <laughs> where, I... where it's all just solo artists and anybody that's, that wants to do rock or punk rock or anything like that will just be solo. Like the bedroom punk rockers of epitaph or whatever, right? Like you guys give me hope. So what, what are your thoughts on that though? I'm sure you guys have thought about it a little bit. I've, I've definitely had some thoughts and I definitely don't think it's going anywhere, but I I definitely have seen it um, evolve quite a bit, especially with technology, just crazy what we can do. I mean, you guys like MXPX, when you guys uh, started doing your little live streams at home, Mm -hmm. that wasn't a thing like five, 10 years ago. It's something we can do now. Mm -hmm. Uh, We, we've been working with like backing tracks and stuff. And like, I never even like, 
never even thought of the concept of that when I was first playing music. Yeah. And now it's to the point that last show we played, um, I mean, I don't know what this kid's like aspirations are, but he's a musician that's clearly got talent, writes songs. He just must not have the best of luck with members, but he mm. opened up the show by himself and he just had the whole entire band all on tracks. Yeah. Shout out to All Along. That's All Along, by the oh, way. Yeah, all along. And um, it's, a, it's a trip yeah. when you see it, but then you're like, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> And I've seen I've seen uh, Kenny Hoopla do it live too. He did it all by himself with just backing tracks of the band. So I think it it, it can come down to um, you know that person's personality. I'll say for myself, I'm kind of was the opposite route. I you know doing hip hop, I always was a solo thing and did shows solo. Um, and I was the opposite. I felt like I needed more people on stage with me. I needed. Um, just to be able to feed off of other people and have that chemistry and make eye contact when you're really feeling it, you know, things like that. Those are the things that makes it really fun for me. Um, so I can completely understand why, you know, people might go the solar route and why that might actually be leaning towards the future because it's getting easier to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, less people to split the money with and things like that. Um, but I think for me personally, and for us, it's one of those things that, having the band members is really the fun behind it and 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 like i was saying earlier two heads are always better than one so that's my philosophy on it yeah you have you have a family you have a your your core group it's it's it really is pretty cool and um you know so like you said solo people are cool too um and it's way less expensive <laughs> it's insane <laughs> you know like when mxpx does a show versus when i do a solo show it's obviously you know it's it's astronomically different, you know, what needs to be at the venue, what kind of equipment we need, you know, that kind of thing. So it's something I've never been comfortable with, but I've always thought about it is backing tracks. Like we were talking about, um, just, just yeah. the fact of even playing to a click, we play with to a click, of course, recording, but you guys are doing it live. How do you do that? I guess what I would say on a budget, because I've always thought, okay, if I ever did that, I would need, a tech on on the stage on the side of the stage pushing the play and pushing stop or whatever it is that needs to happen. Yeah. You guys I'll have any experience? <laughs> yeah. Well, that. I'll say the the way we do it is not exactly what I would consider on a budget. Um, there are definitely <laughs> simpler ways to achieve a very like similar outcome, uh, but we had spoken with the, the producers that helped them record and they're, they're a little bit more particular and, and they kind of pushed us towards this slightly more advanced uh, system. Cause they're like, Oh no, you got to have stereo this and that. So the option of going like the real cheap, Oh, you just run backing tracks. You just run headphone out, mm -hmm. click on one side tracks on the other. You can do that with literally just your phone mm -hmm. and spend maybe like 10 bucks on like a cable to plug in and like, you're good to go. So it, the, the concept behind like um, like supplementing your sound with re pre-recorded tracks is the concept simple. Uh, it just depends on like how how flexible and how fancy do you want to get with it. So we 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 kind of went like the a little bit more extreme route, but I'm glad we did because it, it's it's turned out to be extremely uh versatile and flexible for us so essentially i have a whole like rig just right next to my drums since i'm like the audio guy we have a full like x32 rack mount so that mixer that behringer mixer you can do basically anything you want you can run whatever you can dream of mixing wise you you can run it and um and then all of our our stems you uh that we're playing with that are supplementing our audio or you know, I can run it off my laptop. Lately, I've been running a program on my iPad that allows multi-track outputs, and and those go into the mixer. And we actually mic up all of our own equipment too, so that way we have our own mix in our ears, so we aren't reliant on whatever the venue has. Because mm -hmm. at this point, we're playing the most random mix of small places, so mm -hmm. we can never really depend on uh, having good monitoring or anything, which just that was always the thing back in the day. You just, you just, you play your songs and whatever sound you have, you you go with it. But now, again, technology, we can literally have like as clear or perfect sounding audio in our ears whenever we want because we have this mixer, mm -hmm. I have the backing tracks plugged into it, and I can, yeah, just mix it however I want, and I can send whatever I want to the front of house. Uh, they usually get confused and think that like. 
because we use a splitter. Like, say we plug in our mic, yeah. it splits. One, one lead goes to our mixer, and then mm-hmm. the other lead goes to theirs. And so I, I don't even touch it. So they, mm-hmm. it's once you get into it, like it totally makes sense. But it, it's it's become so flexible that um, we have so many options available to us that it's uh, it's pretty cool. But and I'll say also like at you know at first it was something that did for someone who's never done it it is hard to get used to having the click in your ear and you feel like it's going to take away some of the natural just jamming oh, yeah. feeling. Um, but after a while of doing it, you know, we at one point when we were on tour the last night of tour we had um, accidentally changed some of our settings and it was like yeah. time to perform. And we were like, you know what? We're just not going to have the click. We're not going to have the in-ears. Like, let's just go. We got to go. And we just did it. And what was funny is then it was sort of the opposite feeling where we had done it for so long. that it was like, are we going to be able to do this without the in-ears, yeah, without the I'm click? Freaking out <laughs> so so it's, you know, it's, you just take some getting used to is all. Yeah. We yeah. just played the songs raw uh, because we're, yeah, equipment failure. I, yeah. I planned to not run into equipment play <laughs> failure and it still happened. Uh, but right. yeah, we were so used to playing to the clicks and with those backing tracks that it was like, it was like having training wheels. We mm-hmm. we were like just naturally our muscle memory mm-hmm. was like to a click track and all that. So mm-hmm. right, right, yeah, that's cool. I I saw a video of Ronnie Radke. Maybe it was like a meme kind of thing, but where he was like on stage going, "Our computers don't work. They died. They cr- crashed or whatever." And he's like, "We can't oh, play. Yeah. We can't play without our computers." And it, the joke was just like, "You can't play without your computer." What? Right. It's great. Like, right. but. Uh, but I, I can hear what you're saying. Like, I mean, once you – I mean, that's like anything. It's like if you have um, a certain guitar, you know, that's part of your show that – I mean, maybe I'm not thinking of a good analogy. But like something – any other kind of instrument that could be part of your show that makes it that much better and then you don't have it, all of a sudden your show is a little different. It may not be a bad show, but it's just like it feels different to you internally on stage. And, and that that's a – a major thing so where we you know we got you on the in-ear thing like splitters we do all that stuff here in the studio and on stage on on live shows but but then adding that that last thing where it would be like stems click track all of that that's where we haven't really pushed it so have you guys basically have you done just taking your recordings and then you're using the click sessions from that. So if it if it has any changes, that'll change the click tempo. Or are you doing new sessions where it's like this is our live version of the song? We use the stems from the recordings, but as far as the click itself, I believe we make a new click just yeah. because we didn't like how it sounded, um, the one from the studio. Yeah, we kind of refurbished the, uh, the, the studio stems and... And I'll, I'll say too, I've, I've seen a lot of bands that do backing tracks that are like, I see it maybe more with like kind of all, alternative rock and metal bands where they, they're pretty heavy on the backing tracks to where I've actually seen live shows where it's like a drummer, a guitar player, and a singer, like minimal members and heavy backing tracks. Mm-hmm. Ours are definitely more subtle. In fact, a mm-hmm. few of our songs don't even have any backing tracks. It's right. just a click. So. What do we have in there? It's like if anything, it might be like what what we in the studio call fairy dust guitars. We just mm-hmm. you know when we when you when we used to record, there would be this feeling of which I'm sure a lot of bands have, which is like, oh, I'd love to add that to the song, but how are we going to play it live? You know, um, yeah. and. Now we we didn't want to do that anymore, so we're like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and embrace the culture of backing tracks. We like Jeff said, we try to keep it uh, minimal and only stuff that we absolutely need those fairy dust noises or sometimes there's some keyboards um or and our producer on a couple songs um did some background vocals too shout out to lisa pimentel um so we have like her backing track uh, vocals in a couple of parts but there are a lot of songs where um there are no backing tracks or for a lot of it you only hear it right on the chorus or something like that yeah so. it's minimal that's that's dope i mean i think that's reasonable especially for the style of music that you guys are just getting a little extra mm-hmm. fairy dust on it but um mm-hmm. So what? So you're saying you don't have to have a laptop to do all this craziness? You just use your iPad? Yeah, there's at least at this point there's only one uh, app that I I came across recently. I think it's called Multi Tracker or something. But what what blew my mind about this is because uh, when when you're doing like the backing tracks, if you want stereo uh, backing tracks and you want to click, you're at a minimum of like two or sorry, a minimum of three channels going out so you can't use the headphone output because that's left and right 
you got two channels. So now you need multi-track output. So the only way I originally thought we could do this is say just plug the laptop into the mixer via USB. You got the your your mixer is a digital I/O. It's an interface, and you can then go through and you can assign as many individual outputs as you want. Well, it turns out this iPad app you can actually plug in to the the Lightning port, and it it reckon it speaks to the X32 mixer and allows you that same assigning multiple like individual outputs to the mixer. And I I had no idea that was possible, but um, it's much nicer because now I don't have to worry about my uh, computer getting beer spilt on it and stuff at a show <laughs> absolutely right on so let's talk about other songs on the new record um having not heard any what what should i check out what should people check out when it comes out aside of course Ooh, what what i do this time they can check out right now right well there's a couple other singles that are out now including say party and okay. don't depend on me yep. so those are two others that will be on the album and then as far as ones on the album that haven't been released yet um my my personal top three and i'll see, I'll see what jeff says but my personal top three is we have a song called skeletons yeah um we have a song that will be called lock and load um and we have a song called can't do a damn thing about that um and those are all some of my favorites that like i just listen to on repeat um yeah so those are my t aside from the singles that are already out those are my three that i'm really looking forward to everyone getting to hear yeah mine are actually different but okay. No, I, I really, I mean, Skeletons, obviously, is great. You're going to hear a song called uh, Haven't Heard From You and uh, a song called Willows as well. They're they're not the most aggressive or faster songs, but to me, I'm all about, like, a good melody. And just, like, on uh, where mentioning what I do this time, that, like, that hook where that song where all of a sudden, like, you can't get it out of your head, you know, it just yeah. plays on repeat. And to me, the that Willows and Haven't Heard From You are just... They live in my head over and over and over mm -hmm. on repeat. And I mean, to be honest, I think just about any of these, any of the songs you'll you'll find out very soon on the album all share that kind of similar quality to them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So where do you where do you think you get this like songwriting, melody writing? Are, is it you write? Or is everybody writing the melodies, or is it you, Shane? The, the singing, vocal melody the singing, is yeah. usually me, um, but I will say our producer, and you know, um, just to kind of back up a little bit, I'll say that we've had experiences where, you know, we, I used to think going to a producer, going to get a, something, a song recorded, the producer's job was to hit record and just to take our idea. And when I first started um, recording with the people we record with now, when they would suggest ideas, I was we were we would kind of butt heads on that. Um, and now I've learned to just um, trust the professionals and trust their advice, and that that's we're going to them for a reason. Um, so there are a couple songs where um, you know I might come up with a melody, and they might say, ah, I think we should maybe adjust it a little bit, or there's too many words right there. And um, one thing that they've taught me that helps a lot is just whatever I come up with, I'll like practice playing it on a piano and seeing like. Does it sound like something good just as an instrument um, and it, or does it sound like, you know, the same note being hit really quick or whatever? Um, so um, I would say that is part of it. I'll come up with something in my head and then I'll try to fine tune it through the use of like imagining, OK, if this was played on a piano or on a guitar, would it sound just as catchy, just as good? Um, and try to think like that. That's rad. Mm -hmm. what, what about you, Jeff? Like, how are you how are you approaching playing drums and all that how, how you've been playing drums a while but um yeah um actually so with this project i you didn't even i don't think we mentioned this album that's coming out has this was like a was it a pre-covid project it it started basically at the height of covid spring of 2020 we had a tour already booked that was going to be our first tour and then covid happened um so we were like okay what should we do how could we capitalize on this time we're like, you know, we got all these songs. Let's go uh, record an album. Um, and that ended up taking a lot longer than it was anticipated. And we did a lot of writing and rewriting and recording and re-recording. Um, but it started as kind of a COVID project. And now here we are three years later. And it's going to be out soon. So, yeah. To, so what I'm kind of getting at is I actually joined the band um, April last year. Yes. So almost a year. So the album had actually already been completely done. So okay. Since April till now has all been just me learning the songs, getting out there, touring, getting ready for, for the album. So it's all been post-album writing. So um, I 
haven't done any actual like contributing to songwriting. Um, but that's what I, I'm one thing I'm really excited for after this next tour. And once we get like the momentum out there on the new album mm-hmm. and we start looking at writing songs, then then uh, I'm, I'm definitely not like the the melody writer, but I definitely love to get in there and uh, you know, I'll sense, okay, well, we've switched mm-hmm. this around, do this or that. And so, I don't know, the, the future in terms of, uh, I don't know what our sound is gonna be like, it's gonna be similar, but mm-hmm. we're probably gonna work with different producers, try mm-hmm. things. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see like, yeah, the future songwriting might and that, different. that was That's one cool. thing that we loved about um, bringing, bringing Jeff into the band was aside from um, drumming and all the audio engineering things, he is just a multi-instrumentalist and understands songwriting and um, song structure as a whole. So he understands, like, you know, to play drums for the song, but also how to help out with the song in other ways, too. So it's a big yeah. benefit. You guys, um, you had asked me, uh, I think when I first joined, that you're like, because you'd work with the producers and their was it their son or whatever was uh, helped out with a lot of the drum parts because he's just a, a great studio musician. And they had asked me like, hey, would you be okay in the future if if somebody else came up with drum parts or played drum parts on the the album? Uh, because you know some some drummers are very particular of like, oh my ego or no, that's got to be me. And I was like, I am 100% okay. Like. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, whatever sounds best for the song, and I might come up with like a banger drum, uh, you know, piece that like fits it. But I'm always open. If somebody else says, well, what if we play it this way, and then they lay down a drum beat, I'm like, oh man, that's that's perfect. Like, let's go with that. I'm I'm so open to it. So uh, it's good to keep an open mind for the sake of the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the service to the song is what we call it like any decision we try to make we try to make it in service to the song and sometimes the part you really wanted to do just doesn't fit in or or what you know just not not but um that's a good attitude to have I, i love it so let's let's bring it home uh tell everybody again uh where maybe they can find you guys where they can get the record all of that stuff when it's coming it's coming up yes. next week when this this will air on March 27th, so Monday, March 27th. Okay, okay cool. Um, yes, yeah, so debut album, Juliet Street, available Friday, March 31st, uh, available on any and all streaming platforms. Um, we will hit the road the very next morning um, and travel up the West Coast, um, Oregon, Washington, um, and then we will also, um, in the summer, hit the East Coast and then head down South and hit Atlanta, Memphis. So we have a, a big, huge nationwide tour planned. We are really, really excited about this album. Um, we plan on you know giving it 100%, giving it everything that it deserves. So I won't list all the show dates, because like I said, we have a lot, but follow us wherever you follow people, uh, Pinstock, P-I-N-S-T-O-C-K, and uh, make sure you come catch us at a show. So right on. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Shane. Pinstock, uh, it's got a bright future ahead. I can feel it. I can hear it. I love it. Brother. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. All right. What's the website one more time? Uh, the Well, the website, for our, the official website is just pinstockband.com. You okay. can get everything there, but also you can do linktree slash pinstock or anywhere on the internet. Just search pinstock. Awesome. Yeah, it's, luckily, it's, it's easy to search for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rad. All right. Well, uh, good luck to you guys and have a great tour and Good luck with the record. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Peace, everybody. Peace out, Peace out. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll I'll, sh- I'll cut it there. Um, okay. Cool. That was great, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, please send me a photo of you two, or it could be of a live photo or whatever. Some. It, it just depends on what you would rather us do for the promo. It's for the the podcast promo stuff. Okay, just the two of us though to make sure they know who the word, who's talking. Yeah, and if you want it to be the whole band, choose one that's like you two prominently. Um, I don't know if that's even possible, okay, gotcha. but um, it might be easier if you just okay. do one when you get off the phone. Just do a couple to for, to choose from. Cool. Okay. Well, whatever you want. That's good. Whatever you want. It's it's you know it promotes you guys, so we'll make you look good. Are you uh, are you gonna be up there in uh, Washington for a while? Uh, I will be for a little bit, a couple weeks. Where do you, where are you guys playing up here? It's a, there's one show up your way that we're playing. Washington, we play uh, Olympia, and that's uh, Friday. Oh yeah, yeah, Friday, April seventh. We play Olympia, Washington. It's our only Washington date. 
I, I think I'm going to be. That is. I think I'm going to be out of town that week because I I'm doing videos the first and second here. Well, next week we're out of town, and then the weekend after we're kind of at it. We're in Seattle, and then we're here. But then I have a week off, and so I think I'm going to be gone. But if for some reason I'm I'm around, I'll uh, I'll try to hit it up. It's like an hour away or so. Cool. We'll save cool. Time. Well, either way, we'll we'll be back up too. I'm sure we'll yep. catch you at some point. Cool. Yeah, send me the um, may, you know, send me the screen thing too uh, of like your dates or your tour dates or whatever yeah. run, and yeah. I can always like throw that on the on the uh, show notes as well. Cool. cool. Yeah, we got that. Cool. Yeah, we'll All right, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks, brother. Really Bye. appreciate you, man. Thanks yep. so much. See you, Mike. Cheers.